Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, I'm going to start this video out by just giving you guys a warning. Well, not a warning, more of a message. Um, I'm going to start adding new content to the channel, starting with this video, something different from the normal 3M Cantata laden, laden format. Um, I'd like to continue uploading Cantata tapes, but the reality is, is that there's very few that survive and there's no catalog which lists what tapes I do have, what tapes I don't have. Um, and it's very difficult to say, hey, you know, as long as I can find these tapes, you know, yeah, cool. You know, let's, let's keep uploading these things. But, you know, for the foreseeable future, I'm not going to find these tapes and there's not going to be any content. And I'd rather come up with something or do something you know, hopefully keep you guys interested in the channel and, um, you know, when 3M Cantata tapes do come up, you know, I'm going to throw them up anyway, you know, regardless. I'd like to thank my subscribers that, you know, have stayed with me to this time. I know that the 3M Cantata is not exactly the most entertaining <laughs> format or the best quality or, you know, whatever. Um... And I'd just like to thank you guys for being patient and, uh, you know, sticking with me up to this point. Um, going forward, I would like to, you know, if you guys, you know, have the time and you continue to watch this channel, I'd like any feedback, criticism you have, good or bad, um, just, you know, to help keep you guys around and, you know, at least create something entertaining for you. I'd rather create something for you guys... Um, that you'd like rather than something that I like or something that, you know, other people like. I'd rather keep you guys, you know, because you've given me the views and, you know, you've been very patient with me and I appreciate it. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy the following video and uh, once again, thank you. Thank you again for sticking with me. I'm going to start with, with this. This is, for me, this is Genesis. This is this is a, uh, the device that changed my life and made me, you know, go from a casual computer user and made me turn, go down the dark, 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 dark path of dealing with computers professionally. This is it. This is a uh, circa 2006 uh, Pulp TX. And it's, you know, the device that made me appreciate computers as a tool. Um, may be skillful with computers in order to compensate for its uh, limitations and problems, but it is the device that changed my life. And I would say this is a review, but I'm going to be more biased than that. <laughs> um, well, let's take a look at the box. If you look at it, it's a Palm TX. I could win $10,000, it looks like. Um, we take a look here at the specifications. It's for for today. It's very very disappointing. It's you know 802.11b. It's got Bluetooth 1.1, um, 128 megabytes. Wow, and it you know it's for 2006. It was it wasn't that great. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, street price on this thing was I believe 299 dollars and. I mean, you think about it, a uh, comparable laptop from that time period would have been about 700 maybe. I, I remember the reason, one of the reasons I purchased this thing was that I couldn't afford a laptop like this Inspiron 1100, you know, Pentium 4, more power to you. And this was the better option. It would get on the internet. I could type Word documents on it and I could do almost all my schoolwork. And, you know, for the most part, the box didn't lie. I mean, you got your stock photos of business people, and, I mean, it, it did everything. Well, let's go ahead and get into the box. This is, this is the actual box. It's the actual device that, you know, I've, since this was, you know, my basically popping the cherry on, on, IT or computers, whatever you want to call it, I kept everything. I kept the software. I kept the original instruction manual. It's, you know, this is as it would have come back in 2006. Of course, you know, the charger cable and all that stuff is out of it, but this is 
this is how a Palm TX would have come out of the box. Uh, you know, you can appreciate uh, how the iPhone and how that was packaged <laughs> to really change, um, you know, from this scary looking gray cardboard box to something a little bit more, more decent. But here it is, here's the Palm TX and um, let's take a look. Apparently I've never checked to see if I won $10,000, so we're gonna have to find out if I, if I did. We got some limited liability stuff. We got a screen protector that's already been peeled off, software installation disc, and uh, of course we got the massive fold-out generic Oh, that's sexy. Look at that. Look at that quick start guide. Unfolds like a like a road map. So there it is. So when this thing was was brand and shiny new, you could take this out of the box, configure it however you wanted to and then uh, and then use it. You didn't have to uh, hot sync it, which is what's Palm's way of um, <clears throat> basically synchronizing the contents on on the uh, on the device it effectively would be almost like a uh, backing up your your apps and and things on your iPhone into iCloud but you literally ha had to have a cable and you had to do that um, <clears throat> oh this is this is funny check out some of these accessories you got some leather wallets nice you got some hard cases nice and this is actually the killer app right here is this wireless keyboard and I'll explain why in a, in a little while. And what else we got? <laughs> GPS. Oh yeah, it's this was this was uh 2006. You were you were not hot shit, but you know, you're you're killing it. Let's take a look and see how this works here. Let's see. Oh, you actually had to visit their website. Go to palm.com slash decoder and then see if you won. Well, obviously I did it, so there we go. <clears throat> so here it is. It's a Palm TX. Let's see if it'll fire up here. And there we go. Let's see if I can get this closer for you. All right, so there we go. So this is the... This would be the Palm home screen. You can see you got applications you got your office documents lightning fast of course you know that's the palm os way um I have no documents in there um and this is uh, you know i use this device probably up until gosh i would say probably up until 2014 when you know support started to taper off for the th for this thing it was uh i mean it was this, this is the actual device. I bought it in uh, mid to late 2006, and I used it all the way up until 2014 where I got my you know, first smartphone. You know, I, was, I was crutching it with this for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, it, it did everything. You got your music, but the YouTube audio library. It's got a built-in speaker. Not sure if you can hear that. Got the... Got this stock, stock generic garage music. Got you know, got all your, all your fan favorites. All right, here we go. There's a few other things that uh, this was capable, capable of at the time. Uh, check it out. Uh, have the keyboard open here. But uh, you could actually still, in 2020, go onto Google Maps from a Palm OS device, and it'll query the stock Google Maps uh, API. And I don't live in San Francisco, it just defaults there. Um, let's just move south here, just...
There we go. Let's say, here's a good one. Let's go look at Disneyland. In my neck of the woods. As you can see, it says temporarily closed, so you know that it's already updated for COVID. Take a look, and then we can, of course, change it to satellite. And you can see the most up-to-date, well, within Google Earth, and zoom in, you know, fairly close, like a modern device, even though this is this is only a 320 by um, 280 screen. And it, it functions just like any other Google Maps uh, client on any other device. So now if we, we <clears throat> turn to the home screen, this thing was, was very useful. I mean, I used it for geocaching at the time. There's Earthcomber. Um, I had a few other, uh, I had actually a Bluetooth um, GPS device that I could pair to this guy. This does GP, uh, Bluetooth GPS. I could use Bluetooth uh, earphones with it, or excuse me, Bluetooth headphones. Um, and I could even browse uh, file shares over over the network. Obviously that this it hasn't been set up in a very long time, so this won't work. Um, but back in the day, especially if you had a Windows XP machine that wasn't properly secured, you could really go in and, and see what, you know, people had on their computers remotely, which was, you know, in cases when, let's say, you were in high school and you were looking for, you know, answer keys or things of that nature, you know, this, this could be very useful. Um, you know, obviously, I could send SMS uh, from this device. It's not configured right now, but used to be able to do it and regarding printing I could actually I could actually this thing has a uh, infrared well, it's, excuse me, it's in this zone right here this guy this actually has an infrared uh, wireless uh, transmitter receiver so you can send things out to other palm devices using infrared or you can control, let's say, a television. Let's say you had the, uh, there was a application that will allow you to basically impersonate Sony television remotes, and you can control it, volume up, volume down, channels, uh, whatever the case, and you could really do everything with this device. <clears throat> now, I did mention earlier that the keyboard was a killer app, and I'll explain to you why here in a second. Um, what happened was that the reason the reason this device really appealed to me at the time, and I don't think it did for a lot of people, was because it was, to me, it was a very low-cost laptop replacement, especially at the time, a decent-sized laptop would cost about, you know, $700. And having something that cost $299 got on the internet, you know, this is pre-netbook, this is pre-iPhone, this is, you know, $299 was a good price. Now, of course, at this wireless keyboard right here, as you can see, I'll show you the folding action going on right there. This actually cost $100, so it's more like $399, but it's neither here nor there. Um, so this would open up, and you would set your device in here, and pre-accelerometer, so you'd actually have to set your device to spin um, manually. Uh, but once you did, we'd create a new document here. Let's create a new Microsoft Word document. And you would be able to type and do whatever you needed to. And this this keyboard, you know, for a, a large part of high school and, and early part of college, this did everything. I typed all my essays on this. I typed everything on this thing. And you can see... I'm going to use this Coke can for size, Diet Coke. Um, you can see actually how small the keyboard is in relation to my hand. And of course, I was, I was smaller back then as well. Um, but I was able to type everything on this with very little, um, you know, fatigue. And a lot of people, you know, even from that time period would remark to me, how do you type on it? And you, you get used to it. It's a small keyboard. It is what it is. But I mean, it was, it was comfortable. It's better than, you know, <laughs> the last generation MacBook keyboards are actually butterfly mechanical keys. They're, you know, they're not great, but they're better than those. 
Um, <clears throat> so, I, I, I mean, this did everything. And one of the nice things about this is there's a certain model of HP printer, and I'm going to throw it up now so you'll see it. It had an infrared port on the front of it, and a lot of colleges and a lot of high schools at the time had this particular model of printer, and they didn't fully understand what the infrared port did or what it was supposed to do. And in reality, it was there so these devices could wirelessly beam the document and print to it. Um, consequently, at the time, a lot of colleges and high schools and things of that nature would actually force you to pay for printing, you know, 10 cents a page, 3 cents a page, whatever the cost was. Well, this would circumvent it. You would just roll up to the printer and just beam it directly to the printer and bypass their computer and their little app, and uh, you would be able to print anything. So uh, let's say there's a line in front of the terminal to go print stuff, or let's say there's a queue in the printer. You would just walk up, waltz up, and then hit print, beam it to the infrared receiver, and it would queue, It would stop all the existing print jobs and print yours first. So let's say you were doing something last minute in college and you just want to get it printed out, you could do it. And this, dev this device was amazing. And, you know, if you encountered another uh, Palm user in the wild, uh, it's actually rarer than a Zune user. The, you know, you, you were lucky to find a single Zune user out of a, you know, high school class. This thing was like, <laughs> good luck. Finding somebody in your same county, that was, that was impressive. It's, it was a... Uh, it was a very underutilized feature. You could actually, I just happen to have it here, another Palm TX. The idea was is that you could I'm going to use this as an example here. You could actually transfer applications and documents wirelessly using a Palm TX. So, okay. So this is a uh, Stater Brothers, uh, one of the Stater Brothers I actually worked at for a period of time. It's a supermarket chain here in Southern, in Southern California. Um, but what you're able to do is you could either dial the number automatically if you're connected to Wi-Fi, or what you can do is you can beam the contact to an applicable device, such as this other Palm Pilot here. And you can see, and it says, would you like to accept Stater Brothers into contacts? And, you know, that was, I mean, to me, that was pretty cool. That was, as I mean, um, you know, Palm wasn't the first one to do it. I believe the Apple Newton was. Um, you know, they had the ability to send a business card. But, you know, obviously this is a, you know, it's the same, or I would say a similarly elegant solution to wirelessly transmit information, uh, large quantities of it, mind you. I could even send, uh, <clears throat> for example, let's take a look at, all right, and there we go. It took, gosh, a full minute to transfer 120 kilobytes, but, you know, for the, um, you know, for what it is, for having no wires, and if you wanted to do something, let's say a Word document or something, that was actually more than reasonable, especially at a time where, um, you know, wireless was difficult to come by. 802.11b was, if you're lucky, you would you would have access to it, but in most cases, no. Excuse me. And it did everything. I mean, you could even draw pictures on this thing if you really wanted to. I mean, of course, the uh, demo one's still there, but new there we go look at the screen response on that wow <laughs> um but i mean it did everything i mean for the longest time it took a very long time for um <clears throat> for you know i would say android or even ios to do everything that this did i mean you could even multitask on this um i, I could even demonstrate that to you where you could be you know playing playing music here. Play Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, it's playing. Don't know if you can hear it. If I press home, I'm gonna open an Office document, open an Excel spreadsheet. And 
wonder if you can hear that. Probably can. And you could see all your quote meeting attendees and other test document information while the music's still playing. Now it's not efficient in the way that you could see all your running applications. You actually could run into a situation where you have too many things running and you literally have to go into the actual app and then close it out. Otherwise it'll sit there hogging memory and sucking your battery life. So there are there are a few problems. But you know overall this this was this was cool. This was you know this was amazing and for you know those of us that had it it was I mean it was the most useful device I had ever owned up, excuse me, up at, at that point in time. Of course, you know, it, be, it quickly became superseded by more capable devices, especially several years down the road. But if you had all your stuff formatted for Palm OS and you everything you lived in this world, it was fantastic. It was a fantastic device. Now, this, unfortunately for Palm, this was pretty much the end of the line. I mean, you had Treos, you had, you know, 750s and 755s, and then they went the Windows Mobile route. Um, they did go, you know, Palm Pre, um, and they had the WebOS concept. And for those of you who know what WebOS is, that was a, you know, HP was just stupid when they sold it off and killed it. Um, but as for Palm OS, this is the end of the line. This is Palm OS 5.4, and I'm not sure of any other standalone Palm device that came with a uh, that came with a more improved or superseded version. And I think that's it. That's that's all I got for you. Um, this is you know this is my attempt at a review. Hope you guys liked it. Um, yeah, let me know if you got questions, comments, ideas. You know. Put them in the comments, and uh, you know I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.